To the untrained eye, data stream information may look like a lot of useless numbers. But being able to read and interpret this data can help make the job of diagnosing drivability problems quick and easy. <laughs> Hi. There's no question. Drivability problems can be tough. Now, that's why Buick Know How decided to do a series on drivability diagnosis. Now, the first drivability program, Drivability Diagnosis Engine Mechanical, concentrated on mechanical engine problems and established the relationship between manifold vacuum and engine condition. Now, this program, Drivability Diagnosis Reading the Data Stream, focuses on diagnosing electronic engine controls using the data stream. Now first, let's look at the input and output information found in the data stream, how the data relates to specific components, and how to interpret this information. For simplicity, we'll concentrate on the 3-liter and the 3.8-liter engines. Now, however, the know-how reference manual contains information for all Buick engine usage. The ECM communicates with a scan tool or with a CAM's terminal through an ALDL connector, terminal E, or terminal M, depending on the engine, in the form of an ALDL data, or as it's more popularly known, data stream information. The ECM transmits this information electronically in the same way messages are communicated over a telephone line. Each data stream transmission provides a picture of the ECM inputs and outputs at 1.25 second intervals. This data can be observed using a handheld scan tool or on the CAM's dynamic display. Not all data contained in the data stream directly relates to actual ECM inputs or outputs. Rather, some data is designed only to provide information. One example is PROM ID. This information is used to verify that the correct PROM is installed in the ECM. The number on the screen should match the last four digits of the production ECM number. However, if the vehicle is not equipped with the original PROM, the number on the screen should match the last four digits of the service ECM part number. Another example of this information signal is trouble codes. This part of the display identifies any trouble codes stored in the ECM memory. Of course, if trouble codes are present, you must refer to the appropriate diagnostic procedures found in the Buick chassis service manual. Now, some of the information on the dynamic display does directly relate to ECM inputs and outputs. Now, one example is coolant temperature. The coolant temperature sensor input is displayed in degrees Celsius. On a warm engine running at idle, the expected reading should be between 85 and 95 degrees Celsius. Cars with electric cooling fans may reach 110 degrees Celsius in the stall. The coolant temperature sensor is a thermistor mounted in an engine coolant passage. A thermistor is a sensor in which the electrical resistance decreases as temperature increases. The ECM supplies one side of the sensor with a 5 volt reference signal and the other side with ground. Low coolant temperatures produce high resistance and high temperatures produce low resistance. The more resistance, the greater the voltage drop across the sensor, which reduces the voltage signal at the ECM. Thus, the voltage signal at the ECM corresponds to engine temperature. This voltage drop is converted into degrees and displayed on the dynamic display. On a cold engine, the display should show approximately the same temperature as the air surrounding the engine. As the engine warms up, the sensor resistance should get lower and the temperature display should increase to the expected reading. Listed below the coolant temperature is the oxygen sensor input signal. The ECM calculates how rich or lean the air-fuel mixture is using the oxygen sensor signal. The oxygen sensor is mounted in the exhaust system, where it monitors the oxygen content in the exhaust gas. When the sensor reaches operating temperature, oxygen in the exhaust reacts with the sensor to generate a small voltage signal. The voltage generated ranges from zero to 1,000 millivolts. Voltage below 500 millivolts indicates a high oxygen content and a lean air-fuel mixture. 
Voltage above 500 millivolts indicates a low oxygen content and a rich mixture. The ECM uses this signal to command fuel delivery. On a warm engine operating in closed loop, the reading should constantly change from a very high voltage reading to a very low voltage reading. The next input signal is from the TPS, or throttle position sensor. The expected TPS reading at closed throttle varies among engines and model years, but should be low at closed throttle and increase as the throttle is open. Now, the exact specification for each engine is found in the know-how reference manual. The throttle position sensor is a potentiometer that measures the movement of the throttle plate. The ECM supplies a 5-volt reference signal to one end of a resistor and ground to the other end. A wiper arm moves along the resistor and picks up a voltage signal equal to the available voltage at that point. This signal provides the ECM with a voltage signal relative to throttle position. At closed throttle, the TPS signal voltage is low. As the throttle opens, voltage increases to approximately 5 volts at wide open throttle. The voltage signal should gradually increase. A signal that does not gradually increase may indicate a faulty sensor. Now let's take a look at the RPM input signal. This display indicates engine speed. The reading at idle should be within 50 RPM of the specified setting. The ECM uses the ignition reference signal to calculate engine speed. This signal is provided by the C-cubed I module. However, the C-cubed I module must receive both a crank sensor and cam sensor signal before the reference signal is sent to the ECM. The crank sensor is a Hall effect switch mounted on the engine block. The signal generated by the sensor provides the module with both RPM and crankshaft position. The cam sensor is also a Hall effect switch. The ECM uses this signal to determine the position of the number one piston in its compression stroke. On 3.8 liter engines, the cam signal allows the ECM to calculate the sequential fuel injection mode of operation. Now the next two numbers on the dynamic display are ECM functions and do not directly relate to a single input or output. However, they can be helpful when analyzing fuel delivery. The ECM is calibrated to allow the injectors to supply the proper amount of fuel for each range of engine operation. The integrator function of the ECM allows it to continually adjust fuel delivery for temporary changes in engine operating conditions. Integrator is displayed as a value between 0 and 255. The average value is 128. The farther the number is above or below 128, the more correction the integrator is making. The integrator continuously monitors the oxygen sensor's output. The ECM uses this calculation to increase or decrease the injector on time, which corresponds to the length of time fuel is sprayed into the cylinder. For example, if a vacuum leak is created in the engine producing a low oxygen output or a lean exhaust, the integrator number would increase, causing the ECM to increase the injector on time. This is indicated on the dynamic display by an increasing integrator number. The higher the number, the longer the injector on time. A large variation below 128 indicates a rich exhaust requiring the ECM to decrease the injector on time. An integrator with a slight variation above or below 128 indicates that the integrator is neutral and no correction is being made to the fuel delivery program. Block learn can be one of the first indications of a drivability problem. Block learn allows the ECM to adjust its calibration to correct for wear and aging system components. Now, using our previous example, if a manifold vacuum leak causes a lean exhaust condition, the integrator number will increase to correct for this condition. If integrator remains approximately four counts above 128 for approximately four seconds, block learn starts to move in the same direction. As the block learn takes over, the integrator returns to 128. And in most cases, no noticeable performance problem is experienced. If block learn reaches its limit, and the condition is still not corrected, the engine will begin to run poorly. Well, that way, a system out of control is indicated by a block learn and an integrator which are both fixed high or low. 
One point to remember, the ECM for some 3 liter and 3.8 liter engines is calibrated so that the block learn will drop to approximately 115 when engine speed is above 1000 RPM. Now, this is normal and is not an indication that a problem exists. And now let's take a look at the cross counts display. The cross counts are also displayed as a number from 0 to 255. This display indicates oxygen sensor activity. Oxygen sensor activity is indicated by the number of times the sensor voltage to the ECM crossed 500 millivolts. The higher the cross counts, the more times the oxygen sensor has seen exhaust gases switch from rich to lean or lean to rich. An extended period at zero cross counts indicates a system out of control, rich or lean. The oxygen sensor signal could be misinterpreted due to the slow update rate of the display. For example, a low oxygen sensor reading may be displayed each time the ECM transmits a data stream. However, this is not an indication of a lean condition because the oxygen sensor voltage crossed above and below the midpoint several times between data stream transmissions, as indicated by the cross count signal. Another input to the ECM is the vehicle speed sensor. The sensor signal is shown on the dynamic display in miles per hour or kilometers per hour. This reading should closely match the actual speedometer reading. Buick uses two types of vehicle speed sensors. The optical type sensor is located in back of the speedometer. With the PM, or permanent magnet generator type vehicle speed sensor, the sensor is mounted on the transaxle. In both cases, the signal from the sensor is proportional to the speed of the vehicle. As vehicle speed increases, the frequency of the voltage signal increases. The signal is sent to the buffer, which amplifies it and converts it to a digital signal. The length of time between pulses determines vehicle speed. In both cases, this input is used by the ECM in its calculations regarding the torque converter clutch, charcoal canister purge, and idle air control functions. The next data stream signal is the battery input to the ECM. With the key on, the display shows available battery voltage at the ECM. When battery voltage is low, the ECM increases engine speed allowing the generator to charge the battery. Battery voltage below 9.6 volts causes the ECM to go into the backup mode. The cal pack or calibration pack located in the ECM contains the backup operating instructions. In this mode, fuel pump operation, cooling fan operation, ignition timing, and the injector pulse width or on time is based on information stored in the cal pack. Now, this could cause problems. For example, if battery voltage falls below 9.6 during cranking, the system will enter the backup mode and may remain there until battery voltage is above 9.6 volts and the ignition is cycled off and on. Now, the next signal on the data stream is airflow. This signal represents the mass airflow sensor signal to the ECM. The mass airflow sensor is mounted just ahead of the throttle body and it measures the amount of air entering the engine. This information is used by the ECM to determine engine load. The sensor produces a frequency output that the ECM uses to calculate the grams of air entering the engine per second. A normal reading with a warm engine running at idle is 4 to 6 grams per second with a maximum value of 150 grams per second. Air entering the engine downstream of the sensor, such as a vacuum leak, will cause a low reading. Incidentally, a mass airflow sensor failure will cause the ECM to set a trouble code 33 or 34 and force the system into the default mode. In this mode, the ECM calculates airflow based on coolant temperature, throttle position, and engine speed. If this happens, the signal displayed on the screen is the ECM default value and not the actual sensor signal. Like with the throttle position sensor, it may be necessary to plot a graph of the mass airflow sensor signal to identify sensor malfunctions. By measuring the signal value at 100 RPM intervals, malfunctions that affect only narrow ranges of operation can be pinpointed. Remember, the ECM depends on the mass airflow signal input to calculate fuel delivery, electronic spark timing, and idle air control operation. 
The next signal on the data stream is the ECM's command to the idle air control valve. Now, we've mentioned this component already, but let's take a closer look. The idle air control, or IAC valve, is mounted on the throttle body, and it controls engine speed by controlling the bypass air around the throttle plate. The IAC pintle retracts to increase airflow and extends to decrease airflow. The ECM commands the IAC motor to move the IAC pintle in steps to precisely control the amount of air bypassing the throttle regardless of engine load. The IAC also acts as a dash pot or decel valve. During deceleration, the pintle retracts, allowing more air to bypass the throttle. The ECM controls IAC operation based on a number of inputs, such as battery voltage, coolant temperature, engine load, engine speed, vehicle speed, throttle position, park neutral, power steering, and air conditioning. IAC movement is displayed on the dynamic display and counts. The IAC counts represent the number of steps the ECM commands the pintle to move out from the seated position. The number should be high during engine warm-up and decrease as the engine warms up. In addition, the number should increase with engine load and when the air conditioning is turned on. A reading below 10 may be an indication of an incorrect minimum air rate adjustment or an engine vacuum leak. The next display is engine load or LV8. LV8 represents the ECM's computed value for engine load and is displayed in counts 0 to 255. A low number indicates light engine load and a high number indicates heavy load. The ECM computes this information based on engine speed and mass airflow inputs. Below LV8, the knock sensor signal is displayed. The knock sensor is a piezoelectric device capable of measuring engine vibration and then converting it into an electrical output. Inside the sensor, a thin piezoelectric ceramic disc is bonded to a metal diaphragm. Engine knock detected by the metal diaphragm applies pressure to the ceramic disc. The knock sensor responds with a voltage signal to the electronic spark control module, or ESC, that is proportional to the engine knock. When detonation is detected, the ESC module reduces the voltage signal to the ECM, and ignition timing is retarded. When no detonation is detected by the sensor, the ESC module sends a constant voltage signal to the ECM, allowing the ECM to provide normal spark advance. On the dynamic display, the knock signal may be displayed in degrees or counts. In the open or normal mode, the knock signal is displayed in counts. A stationary number between 0 and 255 is displayed when detonation is not present and an increasing number is displayed when the ESC is retarding timing. In this case, the number is not important, only whether or not it is changing. Now let's move from knock signal over to EGR. The ECM's command to the EGR is shown on the dynamic display in percentage of EGR solenoid on time. EGR valve operation is controlled and monitored by the electronic vacuum regulator valve, or EVRV. This valve is composed of two parts, the EGR solenoid and the EGR vacuum switch. Manifold vacuum is supplied to the EGR valve through the EGR solenoid. The ECM turns the solenoid on and off. By varying this on-off signal, the ECM controls EGR operation. The EGR vacuum switch allows the ECM to monitor EGR operation. The switch is normally open but is calibrated so when there is sufficient vacuum to open the EGR valve, the switch closes. The ECM uses input from the coolant temperature sensor, throttle position sensor, park neutral switch, vehicle speed sensor, fourth gear switch, and mass airflow sensor to control EGR operation. Now remember, too much EGR can cause stalling at idle or surge during cruise, and too little EGR can cause a spark knock the next signal on the dynamic display is that of the manifold air temperature, or MAT sensor. The MAT sensor is a thermistor that measures the temperature of the air inside the air cleaner housing. 
Like the coolant temperature sensor, the ECM supplies the MAT sensor with a 5-volt reference signal and ground. When air temperature is low, sensor resistance is high, which reduces the voltage signal at the ECM. When air temperatures are high, sensor resistance is low, and the voltage signal is high. Now, this signal is used by the ECM to control fuel delivery and electronic spark timing. The MAT signal should read close to ambient air temperature when the engine is cold and rise as underhood and engine temperature increase. The fuel mix signal is closely related to the oxygen sensor voltage. It indicates whether or not the oxygen sensor is sensing a rich or lean exhaust. If the oxygen sensor voltage is below 500 millivolts, fuel mix will display lean. If oxygen sensor voltage is above 500 millivolts, rich is displayed. Like the oxygen sensor signal, this display should constantly change from lean to rich to lean. Below fuel mix on the dynamic display is TCC, or torque converter clutch. The purpose of the torque converter clutch is to eliminate the power loss of the converter when the vehicle is cruising. It provides the convenience of an automatic transmission with the economy of a manual transmission. The heart of the system is the TCC solenoid located inside the transaxle. Battery voltage is supplied to the solenoid when the ignition is on through a 10 amp fuse and the brake switch. The ECM controls the solenoid by grounding the TCC circuit. With the solenoid energized, hydraulic pressure is applied to engage the clutch. With the solenoid de-energized, pressure to the clutch is released. The ECM controls TCC based on the inputs from several sensors. The ECM energizes the solenoid when coolant temperature is above 65 degrees Celsius, vehicle speed is above approximately 30 miles per hour, and the throttle position sensor signal is indicating a steady road speed. On vehicles equipped with a 440T4 automatic transaxle, the third gear and fourth gear switches must be open. The dynamic display shows the ECM command to the converter clutch solenoid. This does not necessarily mean the clutch has engaged, only that the ECM has grounded the circuit. When diagnosing the TCC system, don't overlook common problems. For example, a TCC surge condition could be caused by a third gear switch circuit intermittently grounding, causing the TCC to engage and disengage. This shows up on the dynamic display as the TCC signal changing from on to off during a steady cruise condition. Now, the next few signals on the dynamic display are switch inputs to the ECM. The first one, power steering, is a pressure operated switch. When power steering pressure is high, the switch closes, sending a voltage signal to the ECM. The ECM uses this information to compensate for the additional load by increasing engine speed and turning off the compressor clutch to prevent a stall. On indicates that the switch is closed as a result of high power steering load. Off indicates that the switch is open with normal power steering load. The reading should change states as the steering wheel is moved from stop to stop. The air conditioning request signal to the ECM depends on the operation of both the air conditioning selector and the air conditioning cycling switch. When the air conditioning selector is moved to air conditioning or defrost with the cycling switch closed, a voltage signal is supplied to the ECM. The ECM increases idle speed and energizes the air conditioning compressor control relay. The dynamic display shows the air conditioning signal as received by the ECM. On is displayed when the selector is moved to air conditioning. Off is displayed when the selector is moved to a non-air conditioning position or when the cycling switch is opened. The park neutral display indicates the status of the park neutral switch. One side of the park neutral switch is connected to ground and the ECM supplies the other side with a reference voltage signal. When the gear selector is moved to the park or neutral position, the park neutral switch closes, supplying a ground to the ECM. When the gear selector is moved to reverse or drive, the switch opens. The ECM uses the park neutral signal to control torque converter clutch, electronic spark timing, exhaust gas recirculation, idle air control, and charcoal canister purge. 
The next signal on the dynamic display shows open or closed loop status. The display indicates whether the computer control system is operating in open or closed loop. In open loop, system operation is based on pre-calibration information. In closed loop, system operation is based on the oxygen sensor signal. On a normally operating engine, the display should change to closed loop after a certain amount of runtime, when the coolant temperature is high enough and the oxygen sensor is active. At idle, the oxygen sensor may cool down, returning the system to open loop. However, increasing the engine speed should return the system to closed loop. The clear flood signal is neither an input or output. It indicates whether or not the ECM is in the clear flood mode. With the engine idling, the display should show off. When the engine is cranking below 400 RPM and the throttle position sensor's voltage signal is greater than 62%, the ECM shuts off the fuel injectors. The display should then read on. The next two signals are used only on vehicles equipped with a 440T4 automatic transaxle. The third gear switch is operated by hydraulic pressure. The switch is normally closed, providing the ECM with a ground. When the transaxle shifts into third gear, hydraulic pressure opens the switch. Operation of the fourth gear switch is similar to third gear switch operation. The ECM uses the third gear signal to control TCC operation. The fourth gear switch signal is used to control torque converter clutch and EGR operation. The third gear display should show on with the transaxle operating in third and fourth gear. The fourth gear switch should show on in fourth gear only. Well, now let's take a look at how to use the scan tool to read the data stream information that we've just discussed. There are several brands of handheld diagnostic scan tools out there on the market, and each one operates slightly differently. For discussion purposes, we'll use the OTC Monitor 2000 to demonstrate scan tool operation. The Monitor 2000 has a nine character display window that displays data stream information and operating instructions. The tool is designed so that the instruction displayed on the tool leads technicians through each procedure. The scan tool power cord plugs into the vehicle's cigarette lighter to power the tool and the tool communicates with the ECM through the ALDL connector. Eight LED displays just below the display window light to indicate the operation of specific system functions. The 16 key keypad is used to operate the tool and the removable memory cartridges contain the programs necessary to test specific vehicles. The computer output gives the scan tool the capability for use in conjunction with the data recorder or other remote displays. To connect the scan tool, turn the ignition off. Install the correct memory cartridge and plug in the power cord and ALDL cable. Then start the engine and follow the display operating instructions. After the correct vehicle information has been entered, the scan tool will display mode X. The data or test modes available for carbureted, TBI, and PFI vehicles are provided on the quick reference card supplied with the scan tool. Press the numbered keys, followed by Enter, for the desired test modes. And notice the available modes are printed on the quick reference card in both red and yellow letters. The test data for modes coded with red lettering appears on the scan tool display above the red bar. Test data for modes coded with yellow lettering appears above the yellow bar. The mode number appears on the display area above the mode bar. A comma before the mode number indicates that the test data is displayed in metric. Now, most scan tools automatically display data stream information in the special or ALDL mode, but also allow activating the other ECM diagnostic modes. With the Monitor 2000, the ECM diagnostic modes are referred to as diagnostic states. In the ALDL diagnostic state, electronic spark timing is advanced 10 degrees, idle air control maintains engine speed at 1,000 RPM, canister purge solenoid may be energized, and the park neutral switch restricted functions are disabled. In the open mode or road test diagnostic state, Data can be monitored without changing engine operation. 
For this reason, it's important to use this diagnostic state whenever possible. However, some systems display only limited data in this state. To enter a special diagnostic state, press the mode key. The message, enter mode X, will appear on the display. Then press zero, followed by the enter key. Doing this causes the tool to display the diagnostic control menu. The menu provides four choices, vehicle setup, printer terminal, tone off on, and diagnostic states. To select diagnostic states, press the number four key. The scan tool will scroll the states that apply to the system being tested. The CAMS Utilities feature provides all of the advantages of a scan tool and more. One Utilities feature is the dynamic display. As we've seen already, the CAMS dynamic display presents all data stream information on one screen. To use this feature, touch Utilities and then Dynamic Display, and the Utilities initialization instructions appear on the screen. After performing all of the steps, touch Page Forward to continue. Then select a vehicle for diagnosing by touching the box for one of those already listed on the screen, or touch New Vehicle to select a new one. With that done, the data stream information will appear on the screen. Touching the Help box on the dynamic display brings up the dynamic display test menu. The test menu allows the technician to access additional features provided with the dynamic display. A data plotter allows technicians to graph signals for all of the data found in the dynamic display. The terminal lists each input and output on the screen. The technicians can use the down and up boxes to scroll through the list and select up to three items. The terminal reads 20 data streams, then displays a graph for the selected data. Data information provides a description of each of the parameters found on the dynamic display. The terminal lists each input and output on the screen. The technician can then scroll through the list and select the desired data and the terminal will display a brief description of that data. The Highlight Selection feature allows the technician to highlight any of the parameters on the dynamic display. After touching Highlight Selection, the data list is displayed on the screen. The technician can scroll through the list and select up to three items, and the selected data will be highlighted on the dynamic display, allowing the technician to focus on only the desired readings. The Idle Data Check automatically tests all data stream data at idle. The CAMS terminal checks all of the data and determines whether or not it's within an acceptable range. Any item reading out of the acceptable range is highlighted on the terminal. The special test feature allows a technician to perform a variety of service procedures. The special tests include minimum error rate adjustment and MAF calibration check. For each of the special tests, instructions on the screen lead the technician through each procedure. The Vehicle Service Monitor, or VSM, feature is used in conjunction with the VSM Data Recorder. It can be very useful for solving intermittent problems. The Data Recorder is used to capture data 30 seconds before and 30 seconds after a vehicle problem occurs. After the Data Recorder is installed in the car, data is captured by simply pressing the button on the trigger handle. Each time the trigger is pressed counts as one event. The data recorder is capable of storing up to five events. Each time the trigger is pressed, the recorder captures approximately 120 data streams or frames, depending on the car model. Now notice at the bottom of the screen the event number, trigger frame, and current frame is displayed. In most cases, the recorder captures 60 frames before the trigger and 60 frames after the trigger. However, if the trigger is pressed just before the vehicle is started, the data recorder stores data starting from when the key was turned on. For example, if the vehicle is started and only 20 data streams are transmitted before the trigger is pressed, the trigger frame will be 20 with 20 frames recorded before the trigger and 100 frames after the trigger. Each time the VSM is used, the recorder must be programmed by the CAMS terminal before it's installed in the vehicle. To do this, follow the instruction on the screen for entering vehicle information. The terminal will then display the instructions for programming the VSM. 
After the VSM data recorder is programmed, be sure to disconnect all VSM connections and terminal battery leads. Now the recorder can be installed on the vehicle. First, connect the power cord to the vehicle's cigarette lighter. With the power cord installed, the green light on the trigger handle should light. Next, connect the VSM ALDL cable and turn the ignition on. When the amber light on the trigger handle comes on, the data recorder is ready to use. After the data is stored in the recorder, it must be transferred to the CAMS terminal for viewing. Now, the procedure for doing this is similar to the one for programming the recorder. After touching Retrieve Data on the VSM function menu, the terminal will provide the necessary instructions. With the data stored, it can now be displayed on the CAMS terminal. The terminal stores the data for a maximum of four vehicles. To display stored data, touch the Displayed Stored Data box. Then touch the box containing the VIN number for the desired vehicle and select the desired event. The VSM display will then appear on the terminal. The VSM display is similar to the dynamic display, except for the controls at the bottom of the screen. When start is touched, the frames begin to advance. Then, by studying the data, the exact cause of the intermittent problems can be located. Another important VSM feature is the VSM log. This is especially useful in service departments with more than one data recorder, because it provides a log of the exact location of each recorder. With this feature, the CAMS terminal automatically keeps record of when each recorder was last programmed and retrieved. Well, the best feature of CAMS is its adaptability. It can continuously be updated, providing improved features and new tests. Yes, drivability problems can be tough, but by understanding the input and output information found in the data stream and how it relates to specific components and how to interpret the data, the job of solving drivability problems is greatly simplified. Even so, success depends upon you, the Buick technician. Yeah.